Okay, great. Well, welcome everyone. I'll, I'll just do introductions and introductions again. My name is Catherine Kendig. I'm the events coordinator with Ruth Bennett Community Farm. Um, we are doing these this agriculture agricultural webinar series as part of um, the terms that we're we're meeting with our with a grant through the USDA. Um, and so we've been offering these resources um, across a variety of topics from, um, you know, in-person workshops with, uh, you know, very practical, useful skills for beginning farmers to um, these, these webinars with um, a series of experts and stakeholders um, around the region. So I'm so glad that you all are able to take advantage of these experts we have today, and hopefully some connections will be made. Um, that's, the, that's the goal. So um, thank you for everyone that's joined and thank you to our hosts, um, our, our um, presenters. Um, we have Sarah Glagora from the Department of Agriculture um, and she's gonna be talking to us today about the Ag and Youth Grant Program. And then we have a participant um, slash recipient, Heidi Whitmer of the LEAF Project and she'll be talking about her personal experience um, going through the program. Um, so just two quick other things, and then we'll all hand it off to Sarah. One is um, there is a, a sh very short, less than five minute survey um, that we'll, I'll throw in the chat at the end. Um, that is uh, a survey monkey, just so that we, we are collecting information that we report back um, in terms of how we're doing as, um, as uh, presenters. And then, um, and it's really helpful for us to improve. So if you have any feedback, and then um, secondly is um, I'll be any I'll be sending out information following the presentations and the recording. And then please do um, you know check out our event break for future um, events coming up. And then at the very end we'll have um, question and answer section. So feel free to drop any questions in the chat, and I'll I'll make sure to get those answered for you. So I'm going to stop talking and hand it over to Sarah. Thank you. Uh, trying to share my screen to so make sure. Can everybody see that? Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, super excited to, to be here with you today. And as Catherine shared, uh, my name is Sarah Glagora. I'm the Special Assistant for Workforce Development and Central Regional Director at the Department of Agriculture. Um, so as part of that work, I help oversee and am the program staff for our Agriculture and Youth Grant. Um, so a little bit of background on the Ag and Youth Grant. Um, the Ag and Youth Grant is part of the PA Farm Bill. Sorry, having some trouble there with the screen. Okay, um, so the Pennsylvania Farm Bill is an investment, investment in Pennsylvania agriculture that helps to grow opportunities and resources, um, remove barriers to entry, and inspire future generation of leaders within agriculture. Um, so the majority of Farm Bill funding is used as grant funding, and that goes directly to the people and businesses in the state working to advance agriculture. Um, the Farm Bill helps support and advance um, specific buckets. So that includes agricultural business development and succession planning, building a strong agricultural workforce, removing regulatory burdens, strengthening ag business climate in Pennsylvania, increasing processing capabilities, um, new market opportunities and investments in organic, um, and protection for Pennsylvania agriculture. So, so through the Farm Bill, um, there are a number of grants that we're able to make possible. These grants include our specialty crop grant, um, a farm to school grant, the urban agriculture grant, very small meat processors grant, and then finally the agriculture and youth grant, which we'll be talking about a little bit more today. So, um, the Agriculture and Youth Grant is a program that provides direct grants and matching grants to help fund eligible projects, programs, and equipment purchases conducted or made by an organization composed mainly of youth or an organization with programs that benefit youth and is organized to promote development in the areas of agriculture, community leadership, vocational training, and peer fellowship. So, so the key here is that these programs are really intended to focus on youth. 
Um, whether you are an organization that serves mainly youth like a school or FFA, or you're an organization like a YMCA that also has youth programming, um, you are eligible for this grant. Um, for youth with, with the grant, we define youth as 24 or younger. So the program and the projects that it supports um, are really aiming at addressing the looming workforce deficit um, that the industry is expected to and seeing right now. Um, so we really focus on projects and investments into agriculture workforce development and education initiatives. Um, through the most recent uh, round of grants, we awarded approximately $500,000 to about 47 different applicants. Um, so it's important to note that we had a total of 164 applications submitted, um, and we were only able to award 47 of them. So they are very competitive grants um, that a lot of the a lot of people are interested in. So some of the common activities and projects that um, these grants are eligible to support. So we include things um, like education or workforce development seminars or field trips. Um, or education or workforce development programs. So any kind of programming that um, exposes kids to different career exploration opportunities. It can also be used to support agricultural safety training programs, um, capital projects or equipment purchases, and then projects that are aimed at addressing biosecurity um, and illness prevention and containment practices. So we've had a number of different organizations, different types of organizations receive grants. Um, schools oftentimes apply for the grants, like I said, FFA chapters or even 4-H through Penn State Extension. Uh, we've also seen different nonprofits like the YMCA. And then we've also seen some different economic development organizations apply as well. And they've been able to use the funding for a number of different um, projects. So we've seen schools who have used the funds to help build um, or expand greenhouses. So they can use the funding to um, buy things like raised beds or soil or seeds or whatever uh, equipment and tools are needed for that. We've seen schools use the grants to build or support hydroponics or aquaponics systems. We've also seen groups use the funding uh, to create ag summer camps or su um, support transportation to ag career exploration events or even to different ag competitions. Um, there was a school, a college that used the funding to help get their kids to a landscaping competition. Um, so a lot of different ways it can be used. Um, some ways and, and some things, um, some ineligible costs with the grants. Um, these grants cannot be used to reimburse any portion of an in-kind contribution um, to an eligible project. So that is related more to our matching grant. Um, the grant money also may not be used to reimburse wages or salaries of grant recipient staff. So that's a big one. Um, so really the grant funds cannot be used to support any personnel cost. Um, also, the grant money cannot be used to reimburse any portion of the project costs that are being paid or reimbursed under another federal or state grant program. So as you've probably heard me talking, um, we do have two different types of grants. We have a direct grant and a matching grant through this program, both of which are reimbursement grants. So that means you must have done the work and submit an invoice uh, before we can give you the funds. Uh, so the direct grants are up to $7,500, and they can support many of the programs I talked about, um, whether that be helping get equipment, raise beds, soil, um, whatever that may be. Our matching grants go up to $25,000, uh, but they, they are a one-to-one -one match, uh, and they have to be used for capital projects or equipment purchases. Um, so we've seen schools use these grants to purchase a tractor um, or to support costs for construction of a barn or a greenhouse or even um, mobile labs. So they're really used to expand um, facilities, maybe repair or do construction, um, even to help get larger pieces of equipment like welders, um, engines, things like that. So these matching grants are really focused on um, projects that are going to enhance the program or support participation um, years down the road. 
So where can you learn about the grant and get more information? Um, the grant info can be found on PDA's website, um, the Farm Bill site, and you can see that linked at the bottom of this slide. Um, the link will also have link to the grant guidelines. So this gets into the more details, um, logistical details uh, that go with the grant. And that will be posted. The grant guidelines are posted um, when the grant opens. Uh, so that link is on the PDA site as well. So our grants have previously opened in mid to late August, and they're typically open between 30 to 45 days. Now, the exact um, opening and closing dates are subject to change, so it may vary from year to year, and we have had years where we did not open the grants. Um, so just, you know, if you're interested in this, suggest taking a look at the website from time to time. Um, and if you're interested, let us know and we can put you on a mailing list to, to make sure you're aware of when they do open. So the application uh, for the grant can be accessed on that website. It is an online application through the state's single application for assistance um, program. So there's a number of different um, requirements that we require in your application. Some of the, the typical pieces that you usually see um, within grants, your typical business information, FEIN, contact information, and then details on the project. Um, we're really getting big into also looking at objectives and outcomes. Um, so you will be asked for things like that um, to help us learn about how many youth you're serving and how many youth you expect to serve with the grant. Once again, all of that information can be found um, in the grant guidelines. And then once the grant opens, you can take a look at the application to get more details on some of those questions. Um, you can go to the grant website now and see last year's grant guidelines to kind of get an idea of what, it, what you might see when the grant does open. Um, for awardees, there are some reporting requirements. So grant awardees will be required to provide a final report um, at the completion of the project or the grant period. Um, awardees must provide a statement that the project has been completed or implemented um, and ultimately must provide photos of the work or equipment that was purchased along with the narrative. And then finally, um, you must submit your bills and invoices in order then to receive the funds. So as um, you've probably heard, and as I hope I've illustrated, there's a lot of projects um, and opportunities that can be supported by these grants. It, pretty, it is pretty wide open as how you can use them. I have seen agriculture organizations like FFA, uh, programs like the LEAF Project that have you know, already established ag programming be able to use it. But I've also seen groups really new to ag and still learning themselves about agriculture um, use the programming to establish and set up some kind of um, ag project. So there's a lot that can be done with it. You can also find um, on the Ag and Youth website, so on the PDA site, a list of awardees in their projects from the past few years. So this gives you a really great idea of what the funds can be used for um, and what they can support. But I do challenge you, like I said, to think outside of the box because this is so open. There's a lot of great things that you may be able to do that haven't been done yet. So um, I am super excited to have Heidi here with us today. Um, I think she is a great example of how their program has been able to use Ag and Youth. Um, I believe what you've been awarded two or three times now um, and just have had some really successful outcomes. Um, and I think some outcomes that you will be able to replicate in your area as well. So um, now I'd like, love to turn it over to Heidi. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Sarah. Long, yeah, I've been participating in this program for a while and I learned some things today and I just, Sarah, I really appreciate your very clear way of making something that seems intimidating, really straightforward. So thank you. Um, so with my time, I was just going to do a real quick, what is LEAF? Uh, so you understand a little bit of how we're using it. Um, and then talk about how we've implemented um, the funding of the Aggie Youth Grant. Um, and I know we're a small group, so I'm super happy to just answer any direct questions that you have too. Um, okay, so I will share my screen. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, who we are. Um, we uh, 
a, a few pictures. This is our cur, uh, past farm lead, Emma, holding up a Napa cabbage. We're really proud of ourselves for raising a uh, Napa cabbage in a winter tunnel. So that's why we took that picture. <laughs> um, and let me see if I can. Oh, there we go. So this is a quick picture of our farm. We are located in South Central PA. Um, our farm is in Landisburg, which is sort of equally distant from Carlisle and Harrisburg. Um, and we're on seven acres with about two acres in production right now. Each year we employ 30 youth um, in, in the, throughout the school year and in the like middle of winter, we might be down to about 15 youth who are working evenings and weekends. And then during the summer, we want to rerun a pretty rigorous eight week um, employment uh, program where there'll be 30 youth working. So they can work with us over the course of four years. Um, and we have a farming operation, also a commercial kitchen and an outreach program. Uh, I missed, there we go. This is our mission statement. So cultivating youth leaders from diverse backgrounds to a meaningful work in the food system. So uh, we, we believe that we're in partnership with something that already knows what it is and already has all the talents it needs to be successful. Like our young people are who they are and our job is to catch them being talented and passionate about something and give them increased responsibility in those areas. Our focus group is 14 to 18 year olds. Um, and they can start with us as young as 14 and they can work with us up to four years. Um, we are really lucky to be getting a lot of applicants. So like right now we're in our recruitment season and we have a hundred applicants for 15 positions. And so we um, we work really hard to make sure that it's a very diverse crew where their li diverse lived experiences are quite different from each other. And then they learn how to work across difference and appreciate what they're bringing, what other people are bringing. Um, meaningful work is an essential element. We want our young people to understand how powerful they are and that they matter right now. Um, and yeah, it's, they, they meaningfully run our operations. Uh, so they move up, they, they move from being crew into a specialized team, into being a team lead. And so they share responsibility in that way. And why the food system is because everybody eats and it's a radical equalizer. Um, yeah, so here's a little bit about how our program works. Um, our meaningful work is built on the four R's. Every task should have these uh, elements of rigor, responsibility, relationships, and relevance built into them. And our youth crew are taught this early on and they're able to challenge everything and help build things um, and help innovate the model. Um, we work to build hustle and heart, we say a lot. So we like want young people to understand um, what they love about different tasks and what they don't like and like how to, you know, that self-advocacy, self-awareness to, to get into positions where they are really motivated. And so they're learning how to evaluate those sort of things all the time. We use a teaching model called I do, we do, you do. So the youth will task lead, they'll, they'll role model the behavior and then they'll do it alongside people. And then they'll give the participant space to to do it themselves and then get feedback, which leads into our perpetual feedback, continuous growth model. So we're just really believing that all of us are always growing, myself included, um, and that young people can give feedback to staff too. And then ultimately uh, we use a shared authority model, meaning that um, youth staff and board members are involved in all significant strategic and governance decisions that we try to understand who has the expert opinion in the room about any topic and then support them. And often that is our young people. We work really closely in our food system. So here's a few pictures of our different farm partners. So you can see that they're from many different industries. So there's um, artisanal, like a, a small dairy that does artisanal cheeses. We work with some bakers, um, butchers, uh, other veggie farmers, cut flower farmers, so that our young people will get exposed to all the different elements that make our local food system work. And also in a more, for me, perhaps a more profound way, get to know the people who make this their livelihood choice and can like ask them real questions about what motivates them. A real quick day in the summer is we start our day with a check-in. Um, 
And then we have our first morning work session that would go from like 9 to 1130. Um, and so, like I said, there's these different areas of responsibility, farm, kitchen, outreach program. And so you get onto a task that would be likely on the farmer in the kitchen. And then the youth are leading, doing all the levels of management. Um, after lunch, we do a one hour workshop every day. It's a pretty makeshift outdoor classroom here, but it works. Um, and then in the afternoon, they do another work session. So here's a picture of um, making jam in the kitchen that we sell. So we make a lot of preserves with our excesses. And then their day is over around four. Um, so that's my contact information. Um, I don't have slides about how we use youth and ag. So I figured I would just talk about that real quickly. Um, so I just want to say, I think the PA Farm Bill is amazing. Um, I grew up in a um, farming family and the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture has grown in like gr grown in so many more diverse ways in my lifetime to continue to support more and different kinds of farmers. So when I was younger, we didn't work very often, you know, in, in my family, we didn't participate in very many programs. And then um, I've just been so impressed by specifically the PA Farm Bill's ability to meet some gaps in supporting farmers. And so youth and ag um, is really exciting to me because of our mission, like we're really just in the crossroads of like what we care about the most is connecting youth to food land and each other. And then for young people who are called into the field of agriculture, giving them a meaningful chance, even if they're not from a farming background. Um, so I, I say this to anybody who will hear me say it, but the future of agriculture rests on people who are at this moment not connected to production or not not from farming families finding their way into this industry um, because it's such a high craft and um, high context field we need to get to young people earlier so that they can feel a sense of belonging and a sense of agency in these spaces and so that they can navigate it if you don't discover that you want to do this until you already have really hefty student loans and you're in your mid-20s you have created you've closed some doors or, or at least made it harder um and so, yeah, my job is uh, right now, I want to be a bridge so that, you know, everybody eats. I think everybody should have a deeper connection to where their food's coming from. Um, but there are like, at this point, about 10 to 15% of our youth are pursuing um, becoming a farmer. And so uh, we're, we're thrilled to support them. And I think that's about the right ratio for a program like ours. Um, uh, but it, yeah, everyone comes out eating differently. And so we uh, we just turned 10 years old as an organization. So I can say that we are tracking food choice change, which is durable over time. So we, we can show that more than 75% of our families increase their local food sourcing 10 years out, which is awesome. Yeah. So yeah, we're, we're looking to like make the dinner table different in addition to like just that summer experience for the young person. Um, okay, so how does youth and ag work for us? Uh, we um, we have used it uh, for two majorly different projects. So one of them is to, we've only done the $7,500 level um, because the capital investment is not where we're at as a farm right now. We have our infrastructure pretty much in place. Um, and my goal is, to, I, I always want to be running a profitable, well-managed farm. And so it's been a trick for me to try to understand how youth and ag can fit because of um, the ineligibility of compensation, which is where I would most likely want to use it. Um, so instead, what we do is we support supplies and materials to make uh, a farming innovation change that is focused on the, the training element of our youth. So I, I said a lot of jargony words, but the short of it is like we wanted to make a big jump in our IPM management systems. Um, and so that took a bit of investment in new um, monitoring supplies, scouting supplies, beneficials, and then training our youth to manage that new system with us. So that's what we did with one of the years of funding. Um, so we we didn't need all 7,500 for IPM. So we also um, upped our game on some weed management and, um, you know, sort of in general, like, well, the bugs are in the weeds. So we're going to do both things of like getting better at weed management and um, IPM management. And I'm thrilled to say things are much better. And like, because of that investment, um, I'm like way more proud of how those things are happening on our farm. And they, um, yeah, 
were like, you know, there were very thoughtful workshops designed to help the young people come along and be able to implement those systems. Um, and then the other, this year uh, we did get funded, which we're thrilled about, um, and we're using it to institute a no-till deep mulch system. And so they're famously hard to stand up, like they just cost a lot of money in the early phase, but then they're easier to maintain. And so that's um, mostly what we're doing with the funding this year. So yeah, that's my short, what is LEAF and how we're using youth and ag. Um, and I just do wanna say that I think the folks at the PBA are amazing. There's so many wonderful, intelligent, capable and open-minded staff right now who will help you understand where you fit and don't fit and how things can work. And the Farm Bill actually has a lot of diverse resources beyond youth and ag too. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Heidi. Um, did you have a video you wanted to share or are you going to not share that? I I could share. I wasn't sure. It's a little bit dated, but we have a video that shows like a drone footage of the farm. So I'm not sure. I was wondering like if if you all want to see it, I'd be happy to show it. It's about two minutes long. Does the group, is the group interested in seeing that? Okay. All right. um, let me get myself there. And what's IPM stand for? Oh, Integrated Pest Management. My apologies. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay. I, I'm, I'm sure the Novik family or the Novik farm people know that. I wasn't sure if Kiana knew that. <laughs> I didn't, but it was one of my Googleable things here in my notes. So thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here's this video. Can you hear the audio? Uh, no. Cannot. Mm, a limit of Google Slides, eh? Maybe tr try to turn it up. See if you can turn up the volume. Oh, it's very loud on my side. Oh. Uh, okay, well, I can just also use this video to show you without the audio. Okay, so it's the overhead of farm. This was 2018. So if any of you all are farming in 2018, that was like- The Leaf Project's goal is terrible. to cultivate young leaders- oh, There we go. Around okay. Through meaningful work in a food system. So leaf is really important because they're using farming, which in itself teaches a lot of lifelong skills, but that farming is really a tool to teach the youth how to work better together, um, how to be leaders, how to work with businesses, and it's cultivating the leaders for our future area, all while creating a sustainable food source for our area. I think the biggest benefit for youth who are working in the leaf project is that they get a sense of who they are and they start to develop workforce and leadership development skills. It's helped me learn that uh, there's no right or wrong way to to uh, lead people and build a community. It's just that everyone um, does it in their own way and you can be an effective leader. The workshops that we do, there's a mix of diversity workshops where youth learn about working with people that are different from them. The most important thing that I've learned at LEAF um, is creating safe spaces for people to be themselves and to uh, really value them for who they are. So at least ultimate goal is to equip youth to build the world they want to see. So at the core of it, we're cultivating young leaders by putting them in positions of real challenge, real responsibility, uh, real, real, real complex situations that they can see in a different light and um, give them the support and resources to see how they would change that. The thing that I love about working with LEAF is the opportunity to see youth when they are like raw and untapped and you can see their potential and you can see that little thread and start to build something off of that. All right. That was yeah. so nice. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, thanks to PPL for making it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> nice of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those things are not cheap to make those kinds of videos. So it's <laughs> helpful. Yeah. Um, so I'll open it up to any questions that the group has. We have such a nice small group that um, you know, feel free to just ask any anyone um any questions. Um, I have a question, Heidi, about how do you um, manage and report outcomes? Like, how do you decide what outcomes to track, how to track that, and then how to report that 
to somebody who's asking you for a grant or something, like why you do what you do? Oh, it's a great question. Um, for the purposes of the youth and ag grant, it's not that hard um, because it's such a specific project and you just are, you know, basically tracking the finances and the impact of what you're doing. Um, so I found the reporting on youth and ag like way easier than you would think of a, a Pennsylvania or like a state level grant. Um, the bigger question about like metrics of success for youth development is this incredibly complex question in my opinion. It's yeah. akin to this question of like, how can you take responsibility for somebody who is complicated on their own right? You know what I mean? Like, how do you know that your intervention is having some sort of profound impact? Um, and I think the short answer is that there is no great answer to that, but there are best practices in our field um, that are like a combination of quantitative and qualitative and partnership oriented feedback. So um, that is to say that we, we try to have a snapshot of who that young person is before they start with us. We do like a, like a whole lot of uh, inventories and like asking them. And then we, we ask those questions of their parents and then we do a post parallel once a year. And so we can do, I mean, that's, it's messy, right? Because a young person is experiencing so many external influences on who they are. Um, but we can show, even so, I think we've been able to show in partnership, like I work with a bunch of other professors to just keep trying to see if this issue can get easier or better. Um, but the short of it is like, we can show time on task, like the ability to focus over time against obstacles. We can show that we're really moving the needle on that. Um, we're also moving the needle significantly on accurate self-assessment. So like outside of a school setting, do I know who I am? Do I know what motivates me? Um, am I able to like thoughtfully say this takes me this amount of time? Um, a third area that we're having a big impact is what we call 100% responsibility or big picture thinking. The ability to look beyond a small task and look at how it fits into the greater good of the thing that's happening and then take responsibility at that higher level versus just the granular level that you might be tasked with. Um, and that third one correlates like really strongly to promotion opportunities for young people in the future. So your ability to like not just see what your boss is asking you, but the why and then trying to address the why and the way that you're doing something gives people real agency to move up in leadership responsibility wherever they may go. It's also obviously like an entrepreneurial skill. Um, so that's sort of like that really complex who is the person. The other stuff is way easier, right? Like what food do you choose? Like those are just narrative questions. Um, How does your family source food? Um, we do a little work on capturing food heritage in households. You know, so like, are you able to like, we, we do a challenge where we ask someone to learn a heritage dish in their family like go to the the whoever the recipe keeper is and learn from them and then try to replicate it with feedback um and so that's been really fun um we also just track metrics of food that one's fairly straightforward i mean to be honest it is not straightforward pounds of produce is the most useless data point that everybody tracks I, what does that even mean it does nothing for us so we we actually use servings um and then we try to think about it in that way. And I'm trying to encourage a whole field to move toward like a metric that people can understand. Um, and then we do points of engagement. So we we think about deep engagement. So durable partnerships over time that are partnership oriented where they can give us feedback and change our behavior. That's our that's who we want to be working with. And then we just have one off engagements. So we track those two differently. Um, and I'm I'm like real rigorous about this stuff because this is how you get funded. This is how you maintain durable funding. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I might be a little more hyper about it than other small scale farms. Um, and it does take time, but once you have good systems, then it's like just fun to empower young people to also track them and care about them and think about the diversity of folks that we're interacting with and are we doing it well? And then to treat that as a layer of equity and community service at the same time um, is, is one of my goals. So that's a very... We, we can like talk later, but I have a lot of details on any one of the buckets I just mentioned. That's amazing. Thank you. We're at the very beginning of our programming and kind of figuring out like, hey, how do we explain that we're doing something that's good? So that's very helpful to hear all of that. Thank you. Yeah. Good on you. That's exciting. 
Yeah. Well, maybe I'm going to have to see if she is. No, I, I don't have every any questions. Um, all of the information on both fronts was very straightforward and informative. I love your program on all fronts, all facets, the teaching methods, the education, the life skills, the personal management. Um, not enough people care enough to dive into that. I kind of was forced into that work. I'm prior military service. I was a former army officer. So the one thing they don't tell you is it's work, but you also manage people's lives as well. And if you want to have a good soldier, you better be a caring person, you know, kind of goes hand in hand. So I found myself at 23, like not only being a boss, but being a counselor um, of many sorts. Um, and so to hear that you take people's personal development so seriously and you correlate that to work skills is really meaningful. Um, and so I really don't, I see where, all of the areas, it jumps right out to me where our project doesn't fit. Um, the funding, we, we do have funding currently um, for our project. So the reimbursement angle wouldn't work. Um, I see places where it doesn't, but I'm encouraged um, by the funding and it gets my mind um, working where you said think out of the box. That's the kind of person that I am to put something together that does work to fit the parameters because I'm a proponent of all of these things and getting... Um, people in my neighborhood into farming, large scale, small scale, um, any of those things, taking it personally, I'm passionate about all of that. So I'm thinking even just um, ways to make it work um, so that I can make it. That's what I do. I'm not, like I said, I, I got a grant from the Department of Commerce, so I'm versed in making it fit. And so I'm just gonna dive into the links provided and figure out how to do that. Um, and Heidi, I'm going to follow up with you personally, um, just about your program and, you know, what you do. I hear you guys employ youth, um, but I was wondering if you ever did any camps or if you guys leave your space and go to other locations for one-offs educationally, um, just thinking. So um, I'll reach out, but um, my partner with the park is a horticulturalist. So I'm also going to share the information with her because she would be able to see what we can come up with that would be a fit. So thanks. That's awesome. Yeah, please reach out. We love building partnerships with um, urban programs so that our, like we're in a, we're in a small town and rural area and we love to go, you know, build partnerships over time. And um, we've been hosting a bunch of groups out here. We have a pizza oven on site and so we have a like we like to cook together and work together so yeah I'd, I'd love to hear from you it's so great uh, this this is makes me happy to see some connections happening I'm, I'm really excited that um this turned out to be a small group and that um Heidi and Sarah, you had such great presentations and I was really eager to hear about both. Um, and the visual was was super helpful too, Heidi. Um, it looks so beautiful. I wanna go there. <laughs> um, well, unless there, let me just put the um, survey here. If um, folks can just um, take a couple minutes to, um, at some point in the next day or two, um, uh, just fill out it's a few questions. Um, that would be so helpful. Um, and we hope to see you to see everybody um, at any future any one of our future events coming up. Just go back, keep checking back on our social media um, and uh, our event bright. Um, and thank you again to Sarah and Heidi. Um, I think I'll be sending out the information to everybody uh, in the next day or so. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And good luck to everybody in your endeavors. And I chances are high that I may run into any of you in the near future. So um, I hope that I do. Um, and don't hesitate to reach back out to me if there's any questions or if you need any additional resources that I can help connect anyone to. So take care, everyone. 
Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks. everyone. It was really great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks for that, Heidi. All right. Take care. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.